Hello and welcome to tonight's LOL Esports Roundup. We're going to cover uh, several player moves that have occurred in the first uh, 24 hours or so of free agency. Um, there are some players on here that actually were cut by their team when they were still under contract. We'll touch on that as well. Um, keep in mind, the only players that I will discuss are ones that are official through Leaguepedia, Global Contract Database. So if a team announces a player has been signed but the contract is not official, I'm waiting until the contract becomes official. So, um, the news. SK, I missed this one yesterday. Marcoon was let go from his contract. He was under contract beyond um, this year. He had a 3-4 KDA, 4-8 CS per minute, 76 KP in summer and re, uh, summer finals. Um, what are the LEC Championship Finals, whatever the hell they called it. Um, Marcoon's a very, very good facilitator, in my opinion, as far as Western junglers are concerned. I think he is very one-dimensional in that way, but he does serve a very good purpose if he's on a team that has carries around him that he can help facilitate. 324 gold per minute was 18% of gold. 314 damage per minute, 15% of damage. At 15 minutes, he'd be on average up 20 gold, so he's making things happen. Instead of farming, he was down 9 CS and 205 XP on average. So you've got a couple camps there where he's behind and maybe a Rift Herald here or there. Instead, he's trying to get gold via um, getting kills. Three solo kills, eight champions in 19 games. I do think Marcoon is an LEC quality jungler. Um, whether he finds that role, um, you know, going forward remains to be seen. LGD allowed Envy to leave early, um, or I mean, his contract wasn't. It wasn't. I wasn't certain if his contract was up or not because there was no official end date on it. Um, and apparently, he was let go and joined Breon. Breon would make two moves. So Envy joins them at 80 carry. He had a 2-1 KDA, 9-7 CS per minute, 64-6 KP with LGD. LGD sucked if you watch the LPL. Um, he was splitting time with LPC alongside Jin Zhao, and it was just a disaster. Um, 424 gold per minute was about 24.5% of the team's gold. 557 damage per minute, about 28.5% of the damage. Um, seven champions in 21 games. He went from Sandbox in uh, spring to then join LGD for a split and now returns to the LCK. Um, he looked good with Cal in spring. And that's kind of why I've been so high on Cal, uh, even after being with Prince, who then struggled without him. Um, we'll see where Cal ends up as far as Sandbox is concerned. But Envy returning to the LCK, joining Breon. Breon obviously is a team that I really, really enjoy watching. Gideon is replacing Umpty in the jungle, or at least was signed as a possibility. Gideon played with IG this past year in spring. Um, 29 KDA, 5 CS per minute, 68, 2 KP. So below average CS, below average KP. The team did not look great with him in the lineup. They tried to put Gideon and Dove in uh, mid uh, jungle mid, and it just was not really doing it for me. Tianjin finally took the job, and I am definitely looking forward to what IG does, if they can keep that nucleus together. YSKM and him in the top side. And then the bot side with on. I think that there's a lot of potential there. Um, but nevertheless, Gideon, 323 gold per minute was 18.2% of gold. 318 damage per minute, 14.7% of damage. Along the same lines as um, Marcoon, right? Um, you look at even, even though these are different um, regions, the gold and the distribution between the teams are very similar as far as SK and IG were concerned. Um, 10 champions in 36 games for Gideon. Dignitas allowed Jensen to leave from his contract early. Obviously, long time um, LCS mid. Had a 3.6 KDA, 9 CS per minute, 72, 3 KP. He was one of the better mid laners in the LCS once more. Um, Dig did play to facilitate him, help him get ahead. He was their primary carry for much of summer. Um, 4.24 uh, gold per minute was about 23.6% of gold. For, uh, 646 damage per minute was 28.7% of the damage. So was he getting the most gold on the team? No, but was he dealing the most damage? I believe so. On average at 15 minutes, down 210 gold, 50 XP. Had five solo kills, played 10 champions in 27 games in summer. Um, 
this was actually the first year where Jensen didn't go to Worlds in, like, forever. Um, I think he is, like, one of the most experienced players worldwide when it comes to going to the international event. Um, so we'll see if he returns there next year, if he finds a home. He has struggled to find a landing spot the last couple of years. It hasn't been easy for him. Um, I think he it's a mixture of teams not wanting to pay him probably and then him also trying to find a spot that he feels gives him an opportunity to win. Um, Dignitas just kind of scaled and hoped for the best with him in the lineup. That's why he has 9 CS per minute but wasn't ahead at 15. You would figure he'd be ahead if he was farming heavily early game, but that just wasn't the case. HLE, Delight is the one that's been officially um, accounted for on Leakpedia as joining the team, leaving Gen G. He is alongside Viper. Uh, 6 KDA, 74 9 KP, 145 damage per minute. These numbers are from Summer, Summer Playoffs, as well as Worlds for uh, Gen G. Delight really took a step forward this past year after leaving Breon. It is something to note, and I think that going forward with HLE, he has a bright future ahead of him. Um, as far as engage meta is concerned, if that becomes a thing, I am interested to see how that works out for him because I think that that is his weakness if there is one. Um, 316 vision score per minute, placed eight wards every five minutes, two control wards every five minutes, cleared one ward every three minutes, 14 champions in 59 games. So it's, that's a big move for HLE to replace life with delight. FlyQuest allowed Impact to walk. So Impact, um, older player, weak side player, definitely took a step back this past year, in my opinion. 2.6 KDA, 7.7 CS per minute, 57 KP. Four, uh, 367 gold per minute is about 21% of gold. 476 damage per minute, 23% of damage. So he's giving you the return on investment. On average, up 140 gold, 1 CS, 270 XP, 11 solo kills, 7 champions, 18 games. Um, so, impact leaving a little bit to be desired, but at the same time, at his age, um, this is not a shock. At this point in his career, it's not a shock. Will he find a home? I imagine so. But at the same time, um, we are in the latter stages of his career, to say the very least. Speaking of latter stages of your career and finding a home, uh, Immortal signed Ole. So Ole, his, his, his career is very interesting because in 2020 he played, he took 21 off, play, came back in 22, 23 he did military service, and now he's returning to the LCS. And a lot of people are going to say, well, he sucks and this or that. And it's like, although his play leaves a little bit on the table, he consistently is very high in Korean solo queue. And I'm not somebody that really values solo queue a lot, but I feel like people will cherry pick when it comes to like Ole specifically and other players, maybe even Jojo Pune and, and things like that. Players that don't play in the East that do very well in solo queue, they'll be like, oh, well, this player did really well, so he should get a, a LCK slot or an LPL slot or this or that. But when a, a player that doesn't typically play over there does really well in solo queue, it's kind of overlooked and, and, and it's cherry picked away. And I think that that is, that is, um, it kind of shows somebody's true colors anyways, but nevertheless, Ole really good player. Um, at times 2.6 KDA 71, six KP. Keep in mind, these are 2022 stats. 142 damage per minute had a two, six, six vision score per minute placed about seven to eight wards every five minutes, a control ward every other minute cleared one ward every three minutes. 16 champions, 43 games. We'll see what Immortals do somehow. They stayed in the LCS and EG and Golden Guardians leave. So, riddle me that, right? Um, definitely an interesting situation. Um, but Ole coming back, I mean, the guy is really extending his career. And uh, you can't take that away from him. Um, yeah, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Become a YouTube supporter. I hope to see you again tomorrow.